What's going on everyone? John Matrix here with another Punch Showdown video for you guys. And today we're going to talk about money in Hunt Showdown. How you can make money, how you can be efficient with your money, etc, etc. So let's just get straight into it. So Hunt's one of those games where the Hunt Gods can giveth and the Hunt Gods can taketh away. You've uh, been playing for six, seven, eight hours, and all you've done is just die all day long. You're just throwing money away, and there's nothing you can do about it. You're more broke than a $2 hooker on Nickel Knight. So what can we do to help turn this around? How can we make some money in Hunt Showdown? Well, let's start with the basics. The basics of making money in Hunt Showdown is essentially to do the objectives in whatever game mode you're playing. Probably the safest or best way to make money overall in Hunt Showdown is to play some quick play matches. You go in with a free hunter, you get a free starting weapon of whatever your choice, melee, pistol, or shotgun. All the gear you find in the game is in the game mode itself. You make money by closing up the rifts, and if you happen to collect the wellspring, then uh, however long you can hold the wellspring for is the amount of money that you earn. Uh, if you end up dying in the game, you get to keep all your money. You don't keep your hunter, you don't keep any of the weapons, but whatever money you earned, you do get to keep. And uh, if you end up winning some games, then you've got yourself a free hunter, a free loadout, and you've earned a bunch of cash. So uh, quick play is overall going to be probably the best bet for you to make some money if you're really strapped for cash. So overall in quick play, you really don't have much to lose and you have anything pretty much you get in the game to gain. Um, you know, grind some games out. Uh, games are pretty short. They usually only last about 15 minutes or less. So you can get, you know, four or five games in in an hour's time and uh, make a decent amount of money. It is a solo only mode. So if you don't really like playing solos, um, then it might not be the game mode for you. But it is a very easy way to make some cash. And statistically speaking, eventually they're going to win some games, so it can be a good way to get to free hunter and free loadout. But if you don't like quick play, then the other game mode for you is bounty hunt. And uh, this is a mode that you can play solo, you can play with duos, or you can play with trios. And uh, again, the best way to earn money is to simply do the objective. You can go in and you get money for closing uh, the clues, finding clues, whatever you want to call it. Um, there's three clues per boss. So if you're in a dual bounty mode, you can potentially close six uh, clues or find six clues and uh, make a decent amount of money from that. But uh, the best way is to do the objective. Uh, find the boss arena, kill the boss, get the bounties, and uh, extract. And the quicker you extract, the more money you're able to make now. So as you can see, going through this end screen here, we end up uh, making... A uh, little under $900, which is a pretty decent haul for a game. Uh, you can get out quicker. Uh, you can make even more money, being there is a time bonus for how quickly you get in, get the bounty, and get out. Um, and there's also a few RNG ways to make money, which I'm going to talk about now. So there's two random ways that you can make money in the game. And the first way is to find cash registers. As you're going through compounds, closing clues etc etc make sure you look around you can find some cash registers and it's an easy free way to make a little bit of money and the other random way that you can make some money is to simply loot dead uh, hunters that you find on the ground after your fights um, both of these methods you can earn anywhere between 50 and a thousand dollars from looting cash registers or random dead hunters that you've killed adding a nice chunk of change to the uh, money that you can earn on top of completing the objectives Another good way to uh, earn some money in the game that uh, kind of tends to get overlooked at times, I even do it myself, is to look at what your dailies are. You're like right here right now, uh, I have a daily challenge to kill the assassin three times. I can get uh, a tier two explosive and two tier one support items. I've had plenty of dailies where, uh, you know, you, uh, it's something simple like kill five hives and I've gotten um, aftermaths from that. And the items that you get from your dailies are not contraband. So if you wanted to, you can go in and you could sell those items. So you get an aftermat, you sell it, you get half the money back. 
and great way to make some money just doing some dailies so make sure you check your dailies sometimes dailies uh themselves will just give you money as a reward um and then you also have weekly challenges that usually give you blood bonds sometimes they give you uh some uh better weapons or money etc as well uh so yeah make sure you check your dailies but that also brings up another tip of selling your items so another great way of making money you know a lot of times you go in here you buy a hunter it's got gear that you don't want you don't necessarily care about but maybe it's got a gun or two that you want and so now i've got you know two flash bombs saved up right here um you know i've got some dynamite sticks these wax dynamite sticks i'm not going to use so you can go right here and just sell them all and that's another way to earn some money back so you can always just go through your inventory here um see what items you got and you can go through and sell them like right here i've got uh, two uh, carbiner bayonets i'm not going to use them sell all just 123 dollars right there for both of them um you know so yeah just go through your inventory see what you have that you're going to use and what you're not going to use that uh you might have gotten off some uh, hunters you bought and uh just sell it another great way to make some money back so we've talked about all the ways you can earn money in hunt showdown and the different game modes and what you can do with your dailies etc etc so now let's talk about how to be efficient with your money and one way to be efficient with your money is to essentially have a cheap weapon loadout go in kill some hunters that have a better loadout essentially in this example a go in with the carbiner kill someone with a labelle or a mosin and loot that the bell or mosin and come out you've now got a better weapon that you didn't have to spend any money on so finding a good budget build that you can go in and be efficient with and get some kills with and then trade weapons is a very good way to save money uh and hunt showdown so again in this example right here i've got the carbiner and the packs if you look at both of these weapons here carbiner only costs 105 dollars and the packs itself is also only $100. So for $205, you have a very efficient build. The carbiner is essentially a, uh, you know, baby Mosin or ba baby LaBelle, whichever one you want to call it. It's got an effective range of 600, or 600. It's got an effective range of 167 meters. It does good damage at 130 per shot. So that's another gun where you can uh, hit someone in the chest and then swap over to your pistol and uh, kill them quickly or you can just pop them in the face uh, good rate of fire um, the only real downside to it is just that it has low muzzle velocity of 410 meters per second um, so this is essentially a close to medium range rifle uh, the carbiner excels between 20 meters up to maybe 60 to 70 meters somewhere in that range which is where the range of most fights take place so um you want to stay out of uh, shotgun range obviously for people that uh, might be pushing to be shotguns but you also don't want to necessarily be too far away where uh people with long ammo rifles and or sights you know scopes can easily pick you off um another um thing about the carbiner though that that's kind of a downside is the iron sights a lot of people don't necessarily like the iron sights I kind of don't like the iron sights. I can use them, but um, there's definitely guns that have better iron sights. So if need be, you could always um, get the uh, the dead eye unlock, which I haven't unlocked yet. But uh, that adds the dead eye scope to it, which uh, allows you to use it a little bit more as uh, kind of a medium range sniper rifle. The Springfield and Pact combo is another very efficient, very good build in my opinion. Springfield isn't quite as good as what it used to be when it first came out in patch 1.2. Uh, I did an entire prestige um, when patch 1.2 hit of just using the Springfield and uh, packs. And I want to say at the end of the prestige, I ended up with probably close to $30,000 at the end of the prestige. So this is a very cost effective build. As you can see here, the base Springfield is only $38 and again the packs is a hundred bucks so for $138 you basically have like a baby Springfield uppercut uh, kind of combo um, it's very very efficient it uh, does uh, 
pretty good damage, just slightly more than the carbiner at uh, 132 damage a hit. Effective range of 175 meters, so it has a little bit uh, better effective range. It also has a significantly faster muzzle velocity than the carbiner does at 490 meters per second compared to the 410. So you don't have to necessarily lead as much. It is a single shot rifle though, whereas the carbiner is a bolt action rifle. Uh, this does have actually a pretty fast reload time of two seconds compared to like the Martini of the Sparks. Martini having three seconds and the Sparks having four seconds. Um, one of the main problems with the uh, Springfield though is that the hammer takes up a lot of the screen space on your screen. So when you are firing, it can kind of obscure your vision a little bit. But this is a very cost effective and efficient build where, um, you know, you, you play it just like the Sparks. If uh, you, know, you hit someone in the chest with the Sparks, follow up with the uh, packs and finish them off. Another option is the Springfield Marksman, which for a Marksman rifle, $73 is extremely cost effective. And this is a headshot machine. I, I personally think that the Springfield Marksman is still one of the better guns in the game currently. Um, I know because it's a medium ammo, it doesn't, again, have as much pen, and it doesn't have quite the muzzle velocity that the long ammo rifles do, so you still do have to lead it at longer ranges. But for a Marksman scope sniper rifle, $73 is very cost effective. And again, with the packs, it's $173 for your weapon build. So you go in with this, you kill someone that's got a LaBelle or a Mosin or Sparks or whatever you want, and you loot them and you've essentially just spent, you know, $170 and you come out. If you got a LaBelle, the LaBelle is almost $400, like $390, something like that. Let's see what the price of the LaBelle is here. Yeah, it's $397. So you traded a $73 rifle for a almost $400 rifle and that's a, a great way to be efficient with your money as far as weapon builds go. And now that you've looted that LaBelle off another player, that LaBelle can potentially carry you through several rounds, allowing you to be even more efficient with your money. So you've spent, again, you know, 170 some odd dollars for a Springfield PAX. You've killed someone, you've looted the LaBelle off of them, and now you've gone through two, three, four rounds of killing people and winning with that LaBelle. So it just makes it even more efficient. Um, the Martini is $122 and the Sparks is $130. So again, um, these are pretty cost effective weapons. Uh, and there is, you know, various sniper versions of it. There's a Deadeye Martini, Martini Repost, and there's a Marksman version of the uh, Martini now. And then there's the Sniper and Silence version of the Sparks that you can unlock. So, I mean, again, you could go in with these, kill someone, get a LaBelle or a Mosin or you know, something else that uh, is more uh, expensive and uh, has better performance. And that's one way to save yourself some cash. Now let's talk about being efficient with your tools and consumables. This is another great way to potentially save money depending on your hunter's health and build, etc. So again, if you're really strapped for cash, as far as tools go, really, you can just buy yourself uh, a knife or a duster or, you know, the, the heavy knife and a, you know, med kit. That's kind of all you necessarily really need uh, as far as tools go. Um, fuses are 10 bucks, so that's not going to break the bank. And uh, fuses or even a flare pistol here is $36. You could get those to take out the uh, armored, especially ones with the barbed wire. Those are kind of a pain to take out these days. So... You know, uh, but beyond that, just buy yourself a, a knife, essentially, is what I go with, $20, and then buy yourself a med kit. Those are essential, so you always need that, so that's $50 you're spending right there. Now, consumable-wise, this is where you could potentially save yourself some money, depending on your hunter health, etc. So, if you look at this hunter, it's got three health bars, and I know a lot of people like to use the primary vit shots, the, the full ones. And those are $65 a pop. So if you buy two of those, you know, that's 130 bucks. So compare that to the weak vit shots, which are only $10 a piece. Now, with this hunter being he's got or she's got three large bars, 
I could essentially just buy two of the weak vit shots. Being that the weak vit shots heal two bars, if you're down to your last bar, you don't necessarily really need to use a full vit shot with three bars because it'll just heal these two up. So you can save money by buying the weak vit shots here with this health configuration. And honestly, the three bar, three large bar health configuration nowadays is definitely, in my opinion, the way to go with the fire changes being you get hit by a firebomb nowadays with a low with a, a a small bar it burns it off immediately whereas with a large bar you can stop the burning and over time it'll heal itself back so if you have three large bars you don't have any of the small bars in here anywhere you can use that to your advantage and save some money and just buy weak vit shots to complement the health kit instead of buying the large vit shots um and then um with the changes to the weak antidote shot i've been going uh weak antidote shot and um stamina shot lately and just using these uh the you know stamina shot to kill the bosses and then weak antidote shots last a half hour now so most games don't really last a half hour but this essentially makes it so any kind of poison, it just doesn't affect you anymore. You can tank the spider with the weak antidote shot and the stamina shot, and you can just sit there and melee away on it, making the spider pretty easy boss uh, to deal with other than it scurrying away. It takes hives out of the equation, and uh, I can also take the um, meatheads out of the equation because when you get poisoned, the meatheads track you down, and those things hit like a truck. So it's very easy to get killed by those. So I've been doing this a lot lately and then just, you know, looking for the consumable refills and getting the RNG from that. So if we, you know, go with this build and then let's say I get a carabiner and get a PAX. So that's $200 I spent right there. $20 for the knife and $30 for the med kit. So that's $250. It is a to 255 and then another $20 275 that's 25 on top of that so it's 300 bucks so this is a $340 bill and then I mean you compare that to just the label itself which is $400 you have an entire build that's cheaper than just this rifle so very good way to be cost effective with your builds now one other thing that you can do to be even more cost effective and this depends on what level you are in your bloodline and the traits that you have uh in this prestige i'm still not uh leveled up enough to have it but the uh there is a very good uh and well-known combination of traits uh the doctor physician and pack mule if you get those uh all together it's a very strong combination the physician trait here uh, reduces the time to bandage uh, to use a vit shot and to bandage normally it's five second animation time but this reduces this, that uh, time to bandage down to three seconds from five seconds so you can use the med kit quicker than any of the vit shots the doctor trait which unlocks at rank 73 it's also pretty expensive at eight uh, points uh, doubles the amount of health restored for first ace kits so essentially um, instead of just like one bar, it does two bars. So again, if you have the three large bar combo, you can heal up to full from just one bar. And then the pack mule adds an extra charge to your med kit. Uh, receive an additional tool or consume. Oh, right now. This isn't the right one. It's Frontiersman, isn't it? Yes, it's Frontiersman, not pack mule. Carry tools can be used one extra time. So this adds an extra charge to your uh, med kit, allowing you to have four charges on your med kit. So if, with this combination, it's three seconds to heal with the med kit. You'll heal back two large bars instead of just one bar, and you have four charges. So with this combination, you could essentially then, instead of using vit shots, if you wanted to, you could either just use one vit shot and then you could find you know a grenade that you wanted to go in with frag grenade which is 75 bucks 
Do I have those in locks? Doesn't look like. Yes, I do. So it's $70 for a frag grenade if you wanted to do that. Or if you want to use, you know, a Hellfire Bomb, those are $70. Or just a standard Fire Bomb, those are $18. You know, you could go in and um, with the Fire Bombs and the Frag Grenades bring as strong as they are, those are always good to, to take with you. Um, or you could even, again, not go in with any of its shots and get one of each. So it's another way, again, of being efficient with your character build. Being uh, having those three traits in con combination with each other makes your med kit extremely efficient, so that frees up more consumable slots that you can have, which will allow you to again be more efficient, save more money, uh, potentially get more kills if you're able to go in there with some grenades instead of just using the um, consumable stations to get the RNG back from you know whatever you're going to get because it's you could might not even get a grenade you might get you know an antidote shot you might get just get a hive grenade you might just get a regular dynamite stick you know it's all rng so instead of uh worrying about uh potentially what you could get from rng again it's another way that you could just uh save some money on heals and make your um, build more efficient with grenades so in conclusion, overall, as far as making money goes in Showdown, it's pretty straightforward. Do the objectives in any game mode, and you're going to make some money. Um, there's also the RNG factors, of course, of uh, finding the cash registers laid around the maps, looting dead hunters, um, and then being efficient with your dailies. And if there's any items from your dailies that you don't want, you can sell them. Uh, selling any items back from you know the hunters that you've bought and uh from things that you're not going to use from the hunters etc etc and then um really uh, mostly it's about in my opinion it's mostly about being efficient with your builds in order to save money and get better equipment looted off of uh, hunters that you killed so um yeah that's uh, pretty much it guys as far as it goes for making money here in hunt showdown so I hope this uh, little economy guide, little money guide helps you guys out. Helps you uh, make a brain out there in the uh, Hunt Showdown world out there in the bayou. Um, hope you liked the video, guys. If you did uh, enjoy the video, you know, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It definitely helps the channel out a lot. Um, I've got plenty of other Hunt Showdown content. Uh, feel free to look around and check all that stuff out. Um, and yeah, you can catch me over at uh, twitch.tv slash johnmatrix69 if you'd like to uh, come hang out and say hello and watch your stream uh, some Hunt Showdown and uh, whatever other various games I'm playing. And uh, you can also follow me on Twitter if you'd like to uh, at johnmatrix69 so you can know what's going on with me when I get new videos out, etc, etc. So, uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by, guys. Thanks for checking out the video. Thanks for checking out the channel. And if you could do me one last favor, be kind to each other out there. The world is a crazy place right now, and uh, we could use a little more kindness out there. So, thanks again, guys. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.